Hello everyone. In the previous lecture, we discussed about the cell model and in the cell model we discussed the nucleons orbiting in their individual orbitals. So the, it is sort of a you know, weak interaction among the nucleons, though the nuclear force is a strong force, but uh, the nucleons in their individual orbitals do not interact with the other nucleons in other orbitals and by solving the Schrodinger equation of a nucleon using the potential, the potential though it is non-central, we assume that it is a central potential offered by other nucleons to the particular nucleon. We get the energy states of the nucleons and whereby you populate those levels to get the, the configuration of the nucleons in the nucleus. And the cell model uh, could explain the magic number. So that will, that will be the application of the cell model. What are the different applications? What were the limitations we, we discussed in terms of liquid drop model? We can now try to see how this uh, cell model scheme explains those things. So the cell model explains the magic numbers. Just now we saw in the previous lecture. The, by introduction of the spin orbit coupling uh, between the, the, state, the L and the S value, the coupling of L and S, we could uh, regenerate the magic numbers. Essentially, the, because of the strong spin orbit coupling, the L plus half state is lowered and the L minus half is raised, and the gap between L plus half and L minus half increases as the L value increases. Now the high value of sufficient energy of protons and neutrons for magic number of nucle magic nuclei I mean those nuclei which have magic number of nucleons and protons. This can be explained by large energy gap above the closed cell. So when you want to, so that is, a, is like a tightly bound, uh, nucleons in the, nu the closed cell are tightly bound to remove the, any individual nucleon from that tightly bound shell it requires extra energy and that is why the surface energies are higher. If you have a neutron more than or a proton more than the magic number then again it is easy to remove that particular neutron or proton from the nucleus having magic number of nucleons. The absorption cross section for the such a nuclei which have magic number of protons and neutrons again is very high, very low because again the large energy gap above the closed shell. The ground state and now this is important now the cell model can explain the ground state spin and parity of the nuclei. In fact, the liquid drop model could not explain the spin and parity of nuclei in their ground state. Also, the liquid drop model could not explain the nuclear isomers in by using in cell model. We can uh, able to explain the existence of isomeric states. The nuclear isomers are nothing but excited states of nuclei which are having metastability means having higher half life. So they don't come down by gamma decay immediately. Normally, you know, gamma decay will take place in picoseconds time. But the isomers will take about maybe it could be milliseconds, seconds or minutes, hours and so. In addition to these uh, properties, there are other properties of nuclei, the magnetic dipole moment of the nuclei and the electric quadruple nuclei also can be explained using the cell model. But I will not discuss these two points in this particular course. Okay. Now let us see how we can explain the magic numbers. Just now we discussed this, that the magic numbers arise whenever there is a large gap between, in fact, this is called the cell, essentially the concept of cell has come because that we have a cell like after this eight and 20, this eight nucleon, there is a large gap. So this is one shell, one shell, let us say cell one, second shell, third shell, like this. 
this is third shell and then you have the fourth shell so you, this is the killing shell you know and so there is a gap between two cells another cell we have so the, the different orbitals levels have bunched together and in fact there is a now you can see the nucleons can occupy the states the energy of these orbitals are very close and the 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 result of that close energy between the different orbitals we will discuss subsequently in explaining the properties of nuclei but with the ground state spin parity so the concept of shell has come because after that close configuration there is a large energy gap and so the nucleo the nucleus will try to attain that configuration so if there is a neutron extra over this con shell configuration close shell configuration it will be easily able to give that nucleon from the uh, to, to form the close shell configuration and that is what is the concept behind the shell model. so the uh, the lick spin orbit coupling we introduced to explain the magic numbers the high suppression energy of the nuclei having magic number of protons or neutron can be explained by the large energy gap here so this this is a very compact nucleus and similarly the low suppression energy for the nuclei one above the magic number again because of the magic number configuration above the magic number if there is one nucleon it can be easily removed so energy is required to remove a nucleon over the magic number is much less again suppose you have a nucleus having 82 protons then it has got a low neutron absorption cross section because it would not like to take a neutron to become a one nucleon more than the magic number of so this is how properties of the particularly with regard to the magic number can be explained now let us see how can explain the ground state spin and parity of nuclei the bulk of this lecture we will spend more on this one so when we say so we will construct the shell model states for nuclei using the filling of the nucleons in the shell model states and we will use that parity so parity what is parity is nothing but the minus 1 to the power l that is the l state so s p d f they have their parity because the essentially parity is the symmetry of a function for example if you take x to minus x and this function changes sign we say it is an odd parity and if by changing x from x to minus x there is no change in the sign of the function we say it is even parity like cos theta is a even function sin theta is an odd function similarly any function any orbital s orbital d orbital g orbital l values are even so this has got this has got uh, even parity because the l values are even so any l value 0 2 4 is or uh, even parity and any l value to 1 3 uh, and 5 are called negative parity so depending upon the l value uh, the orbital state populated by a nucleon we can straight away say what will be the parity of that nucleus now let us see the what are the thumb rules for determining the spin and parity of the nuclei so first is the even even nuclei it is very simple even even nuclei all the nucleons are paired up and therefore this spin will be zero and parity will be plus so the ground state spins and of the even even nuclei are always zero Say so. If any nucleus which is even even, you can straight away say the spin will be zero. When it comes to odd a nuclei, either the neutron will be odd or proton will be odd. So the spin of that nucleus, the ground state spin of the nucleus will be the the spin of that the j value of the last occupied orbit. L so j of the i will be equal to j of the last occupied orbital and we will see subsequently how to do that there are there are odd odd nuclei in the case of odd odd nuclei there is a odd proton and there is a odd neutron and so the odd proton and odd neutron coupled together to give you the spin of the nucleus and uh, it is little complicated so we will there are rules which are called nordheim's rules by using nordheim's rule we will try to predict the ground state spin of odd odd nuclei 
So now let us see how to build the cell model states. I will give you some examples like helium-4. Now helium-4 has got two protons and two neutrons. So you will say, so when I say pi, essentially I am being proton. And when I say neutron, nu is the neutron state. In the single particle, this cell model is also called single particle model. Single particle means you will take individual nucleon in a potential and generate the label scheme. So sometimes cell models are also called single particle model. And for single particles, the states are like proton status pi and neutron states are nu. So what is the orbital occupied by the proton is say pi s half and nu s half. So two neutrons are paired in the nu this half half, two protons are paired up in this. So I equal to 0 plus, very easy to construct. If you try to recollect the scheme, so I can see here that you have first this s, s orbital, so it will be s half, then you have 1s, 1p, 1p will be split into 1p 3 by 2, 1p half, then you have 1d will split into 1d 5 by 2, 1d 3 by 2 and you will have 2s it will be 2s half and like that you can build up the scheme. So for oxygen 16 again, oxygen 16 you will have, I think there is some mistake here, oxygen 16 so it is 8, 8 it should be 0 plus odd or even 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 nucleus pi s half 2 1 p 3 by 2 and 1 p half or 8 nucleons you occupy and again neutrons nu 1 s half 2 1 p 3 by 2 4 and 1 p half so it is actually 0 not 1 or not half so any in fact any even even nucleus you will have the i equal to 0. Let's come to the ordered nuclei now. So oxygen 17, 8 protons and 9 neutrons. So it is what you have to see is the which is the orbital occupied by the ninth neutron. The odd neutron that is the ninth one and if you start filling from here so you will see as half s half to p half so for the protons forget about protons about the neutrons so you will have nine neutrons you populate s half to 1 p 3 by 2 4 1 p half 2 and you are left with one neutron that will go to 1 d 5 by 2 so the spin the j value of the last occupied orbital will be the spin of that particular nucleus so i equal to 5 by 2 since it is a d orbital it is 5 by 2 plus so that is how we calculate the spin and parity of the ground state of a nucleus. For example, you have oxygen 15, n equal to 7, 7 neutrons. So you will see again proton states we don't have to bother. S the neutron states you have now s half 2, 1p 3 by 2, 4 and 1p half 1. So 1p half is the last occupied orbital by the odd neutron and accordingly the spin is j is half and parity is p means minus. So this is how you can explain, you can derive the spin and parity of the ground state of a nucleus by building up the cell model scheme and finding out what is the j value of the last occupied orbit. Okay. So we discussed the even even nuclei, ground state is spin is 0. We discussed the odd A nuclei, odd A nuclei ground state spin is the J value of the last occupied nucleon, orbit, last occupied orbital and depending upon the orbital, it is, the parity can be defined. And now let us see for odd odd nuclei, how the we can calculate the ground state spin. So for order nuclei, we have a odd proton spin, Jp we will call and we have a odd neutron spin, Jn. This Jp and Jn will couple together to give you the resultant spin of the nucleus. 
Now, in this case, there are uh, Nordheim's rules which apply to what you call as the Smith groups. Now, what is the Smith groups? Actually, what happened now? When if we, I have not, we are not discussing the magnetic dipole moment of the nuclei, but when you plot the magnetic dipole moment of the nuclei, and uh, last occupied orbital either in J plus uh, L plus half or L minus half states, what was found that the magnetic dipole moments for these two groups of nuclei. What are the two groups? Means that whether the nucleus is uh, the, the levels are the last occupied orbital is J plus L plus half or L minus half, they lie on two lines. And these two lines, that is L plus half, having magnetic dipole moment in one way and the L minus half state magnetic dipole moment the other magnitude. So there is a gap in the two groups. They are quite different magnetic dipole moment depending on the J value and they are, they are called the Smith groups. So a Smith group is actually the classification based on the magnitude of the magnetic dipole moment whether it is L plus half or L minus half. So the same analogy we derive here, Nordin said that if the odd ne neutron and odd proton, they belong to the different Smith groups. So when we say different Smith group means one Smith group is L plus half, other Smith group is L minus half. That is what we mean by Smith groups. In fact, we can suffice to say if they belong to different uh, value of L plus half or L minus half. So if the odd proton and odd neutron belong to different Smith groups, that means one of them is L plus half, other one is L minus half and vice versa. So if JP is L plus half and JN is N minus half, then J, the I, the spin of the nucleus is the, the magnitude of JP minus J. Difference between the sum of difference between the JP and JN absolute value that will be the because the spin is not negative sign, the spin is always positive sign. Integral down the value, the value it can be plus or half integral or integral, but it is plus. So JP minus JN will decide the spin of the nucleus. Just to give you an example, chlorine 38. Chlorine 38. Chlorine atomic number 17 and you have so uh, 17 proton and 21 neutron. How you try to accommodate them? So you let us see how 17, 17 neutron protons you can occupy. You will see that the last uh, proton will go to D3 by 2 state. Now the 21st neutron will go to Seven by two state. So you have, you can see here that D three by two is L minus half, and F seven by two is L plus half. Because D three D three by two is L minus half, and F seven by two is L plus half. So they belong to the proton and neutron to pi orbitals having different uh, Smith groups. And so, JP will be JP will be three by two, which is L minus half. JN is seven by two, which is L plus half. So the spin, nuclear spin of this chlorine thirty-eight will be different between JP and JN, and that is three by two minus seven by two, or you know, seven by two minus three by two, which is the mod of that. So that is equal to two. And chlorine 38 ground state spin is indeed 2. So the Smith group, this Nordin's rule very well explains the spin of the nucleus having a odd odd configuration. The second aspect is that if the odd proton and odd neutron belong to the same Smith group. So there is a, in fact, it is not that easy to predict the spin of this nuclei having odd proton, odd neutron in the same Smith group. But then we say that for such a nuclei, the nuclear spin is more than JP minus JN. So it is, it, it is not easy to just predict it will be what value, but it will be more than JP minus JN. So this is a very simple classification where then you, you have to see what value it is. For example, the aluminum 26. The aluminum 26 having 13 proton and 13 neutrons. So the 30, 30, 13th proton will occupy D5 by 2 
and the 30th neutron will occupy T5 by 2 because same value of proton and neutron numbers. So Jp is 5 by 2 which is L plus half state, D5 by 2 is L plus half state, Jn is 5 by 2 L plus half state. So here is the case where both proton and neutron occupy the same Smith group that is L plus half. For such a nucleus, I is more than Jp minus Jn, that is it will be more than, now 5 by 2 minus 5 by 2 is 0, it is more than 5, 5, 0, but experimentally the value has to be found to be 5. So you can see here it has a range, it could be from 0 to 5, 5 by 2 plus 5 by 2 is 5, so it could, it could be anywhere and so that is the kind of guess it gives that it, it is in that range, but you cannot exactly pinpoint what will be the value of the spin for such nuclei which are the odd proton and odd neutron belong to the same Smith. Okay, so now in fact uh, the cell model you know it is not completely successful in predicting the ground state. I already we have seen in the ordered nuclei, so there are a lot of cases where ordered nuclei you, cell model cannot give exactly, it will give a range, okay, it will be more than this or it will be equal to this depending upon the, in which Smith group they occupy. But for the odd A nuclei or if an even, even nuclei is it very same, it is zero. Odd A nuclei, by and large, the cell model can explain the ground state spin and But there are some discrepancies and that discrepancies we will discuss here. So, discrepancies in the cell model prediction and the observed ground state spin and pair. There are two important phenomena which uh, in fact uh, which lead to these discrepancies. First is the paining energy. Now what happens you know a, a, in, in odd nucleus, so there are cases in a particular shell where are there, there are different orbitals and which are close by in energy. The energy gap is very small. So if a, the thumb rule is that if a odd, odd proton is there, and it happens to be occupying a high spin state, let us say G9 by 2, H11 by 2, then and if there is a nearby low spin state which is filled up, then what happens there is a transition that the, the paired, paired nucleon will try to remain in the high spin state because there will be a gain in the pairing energy. So the pairing energy depends upon the J, J value. So, as you discussed now, the higher, higher the L value, the gap between the two states, L plus half, L minus half, increasing. So, if it, there is a one odd proton or odd neutron, it will prefer, it will be jumped to a low spin state and so the pair will go to the high spin state and that would lead to discrepancies in the cell model prediction. So, whatever you predict based on the cell model, the spins are different from the prediction. And that I try to explain using, using this slide. So arsenic 75 atomic number is 33. So we have the last uh, you have so you have 40, 42 uh, neutrons. So this 33rd proton, what is the is, is spin state of the proton? You can see here last proton state F5 by 2. F5 by 2 is the Occupied state and that according to this one it should be I5 by 2 minus. But actually uh, the observed value is 3 by 2 minus. So here I try to explain the F, F7 by 2 will be 28 protons. Then we have after that 2P3 by 2. So 4, 28 plus 4, 32 and plus the last one goes to uh, F5 by 2. So, according to cell model, the proton should occupy F5 by 2 and hence its spin should be I by 2 minus. But you see here, just before that, there is a P3 by 2 level and that P3 by 2 level is, uh, so the, the, the instead of that 33rd uh, proton occupying F5 by 2, the, the pair goes to F5 by 2 and the odd uh, proton occupies the P3 by 2. So this is what happens that 
if the paired configuration is having higher energy, if it is, if it is higher, lower energy, if it is in a high speed state. And so the F pi by 2 gets stabilized by a paired configuration and the nucleon, odd nucleon goes into the P3 by 2. Similarly, iodine 127, Z equal to 53. So, 53rd proton, you can see, the last proton state is G7 by 2. So, it should be 7 by 2 plus. And so, uh, you can see here, the cell model states, the 50 neutron, 50 proton configuration, 50 numbers here. And then we have the G7 by 2 and the D5 by 2. So, the, the 53rd proton should have occupied 1 G7 by 2 and spin state should have been 7 by 2 plus. But experimental value of this nucleus is 5 by 2 plus. And again, so you can see here that the next state to this is D5 by 2, which is vacant. So, the, the it, will, it will try to remain. The, 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 it is a, the odd proton in the G7 by 2 is not preferred over that in the D5. So, that is the explanation that the odd proton will prefer to remain in a lower J value compared to that in the higher J. Paired configuration will remain in the higher J value. So, this is the one of the uh, explanations for discrepancies in the cell model predictions over the experimentally observed values. So many cases you will find that this kind of changes will take place and then another explanation, another, uh, there are some cases where uh, you know, even this cannot explain, this pairing energy effect cannot explain the ground state spin and parity, particularly in the case of mid-cell nuclei. So this mid-cell nuclei, what I mean by mid-cell nuclei? So when we have 50, 82, 126, these are cell somewhere here, so if around 100 around 100, if the proton number is 100 or neutron number is 100, then for those nuclei, uh, the nucleus is deformed in their ground state. And for such a nuclei, again, you, you will find, you can just to give an example to illustrate this point, RBM-169 has got n equal to 101. And so the 100, uh, one, uh, 100 first neutron, if you see the cell model state, it should occupy pi by 2 state and accordingly its spin should be pi by 2 minus. But actually the observed spin is 1 by 2 minus and there is no uh, half minus state, there is no s orbital or p orbital, p orbital, it should be, actually you can see it should be corresponding to p half. But there is no p orbital p half in the vicinity of this uh, f5 by 2. And therefore, it was becoming difficult to explain how you can get this kind of ground state spins. So one of the explanations is that the collective motion. Collective model means in the nucleus, so other than the cell model, there is one more model called collective model, which I am not able to discuss because of the paucity of time. The collective model considers that the, all the nucleons inside the nucleus undergo a collective motion like the molecules have vibrations and rotations, the nucleus also has its vibrational states and the rotational states. They are called the collective states of the nuclei. And so apart from liquid drop and cell model, there is one more state, one more model called collective model. And that collective model has been validated by observation of the spectra, the rotational spectra. Rotational spectra, you know, the ground state, the, the low-lying states of a even even nucleus, 0 plus, 2 plus, 4 plus, and the energy gaps, you know, you can, from the moment of inertia, rotational energy of a rotational, uh, the, of the nucleus, you can predict B, B, J, J plus 1, where B is just close to add by 2i. And so, you can, people have even found out the moment of inertia, there is a fixed ratio of the energy states for the nearby low-lying states of a collective nucleus. So, for the collective motion, people have seen that if you if the nuclei follow that kind of a relationship, you, you can associate this with the rotational states of the nuclei. And so there is a mixing of collective states and the single particle states or cell model states. And that is one of the explanations for this observable spin values being quite different from cell model predictions. So this is another area where the discrepancies can be explained.
And lastly, I will discuss the nuclear isomers. The nuclear isomers are the long-lived states of nuclei, excited states, and it happens whenever there is a large difference between the excited state and the ground state of the nucleus. So the gamma decay is not easy to happen, and so the gamma decay is hindered. So when the gamma decay is hindered, the nucleus, the excited state has got a long lifetime. So you can see here cadmium 113, 48 protons and 65 neutron that this, the ground excited state of this nucleus is 11 by 2 plus and ground state is half plus. So the cell model states, you can, you can predict the ground state of this nuclei and excited cells are there. So there is a large delta spin change in the gamma decay and therefore this isomeric state has a half-life of 14.1 years. Similarly, the technetium 99M, excited state half minus, ground state 9 by 2 plus, because of the large change in the spin during the gamma decay, this decay is hindered and therefore isomeric state has got a half-life of 6 hours. So again, you can see here the, the state Z is equal to 43 for uh, uh, technetium, the 9 by 2 is the state, so it is the 43rd proton uh, will go to 9 by 2 state and then there is a excited, so if you populate the excited state half plus, half minus, its decay to ground state is hindered and so we can see this 99M technetium is the workhorse of nuclear medicine is used in single proton emission computer tomography. And this happens, the isomeric states are found just below the, uh, the magic number. So you can see here, the magic number is 82 and right from 70 to 82 or even right from 63. So these are the, all the tellurium isotopes have got isomeric states having these odd number of neutrons. So the 71st to 82nd neutron enter H11 by state and nearby S half the state is there. So again, the nucleus decides where to occupy the pair will go to H11 by 2 and the, uh, the odd nucleon will go to S half. So whenever there is a magic cell configuration just below that, there is a large difference in the spin states of the levels and the excited state and ground state have this difference and therefore the gamma decay is hindered. So this is what explains the, energy, the nuclear isomers. There are several nuclei having isomeric states. Many of them are having half-life seconds to hours to even years also. So cell model can therefore explain the properties of nuclei which are based on the, the wherever there is a fluctuation in the property of the nucleus in terms of the mass or in the ground state spin and parities, binding energies and so on. This can be explained by cell model very well. Thank you very much.